Okay, so what I've got here is a Made in Mexico Fender Jaguar. And it came to me just really dirty. And I'm going to show what I do to clean up a guitar that's in pretty dirty shape. This is one of those ones where it's got like green on the frets. So just totally oxidized on the frets. You can see the strings are all rusty. All the chrome pieces are just oxidized. So it looks like it's just been sitting in uh, an environment with some moisture. I usually plug in. So I got this plugged into an amp and I just check if the jack is noisy. It's not um, making any noise on the jack, so that's nice. Uh, but if you get that scratch, 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 scratch kind of thing, the first thing I do is roll up some sandpaper and clean the, the tube of the jack, the sleeve. Because from my experience, 90% of the time when you've got that, that scratchy sound, uh, that noisy jack, it has to do with the sleeve getting some uh, oxidation in there and not making good contact with the sleeve of the jack. You want to save a little time when you're working on guitars, get one of these extensions. Uh, this is made by uh, Music Nomad, this particular one. I like this one because it's real easy to just stick on the tuners. It'll just kind of find it. You can just loosen them real quickly this way. And same thing when you're putting new strings on, real easy to quickly tighten them up. Again, to save time, instead of taking them all the way off, just loosen them up a bit. And then just cut them. Fast way to get rid of some old strings. Then they just come right off the tuners. The guitar is this dirty. The first thing I'm going to start with is just a real basic spray cleaner. Spray it on the towel, not on the guitar. And this will just get the first layer of dirt off. Because there's a lot on this guy. So one of the easiest ways to make the guitar look a little nicer is to uh, replace old rusty screws, if possible. And you can probably see the pickguard screws on this guitar are really rusty and instead of paying a ton for like name brand or some kind of um you know fender um pick guard screws possibly a hardware store i actually went to a marine supply store and found a place where i could buy packs of a hundred um of the perfect size screw to fit on fender pick guards and literally paying like pennies for screw as opposed to guys that are gonna overcharge you for them. I think it's good to have when you're cleaning up a guitar some old toothbrushes. Um, I like to use this stuff for chrome. Um, it's called semi-chrome and uh, you might have to go to an auto uh, supply type store to find it. Uh, you can find it on eBay. It's not cheap but a tube this size lasts you a long long time. You can do some pretty amazing stuff. Just put it on with a, an old toothbrush polish it a bit. I like to use these fender cloths when it comes to doing chrome or nickel. And then uh, this will get off a lot of the tarnish that was on some of those screws. When you take off your bridge piece, remember which way it's situated. Um, sometimes I'll take one off and forget if it had the screws uh, facing towards the head of the guitar or towards the tail. If you're going to be replacing the pickguard screws anyway, you might as well pull the pickguard off and take a look and just make sure you got some original pickups. You never know what you're going to find if it's a used guitar. And it allows you to kind of clean around the edge of that pickguard as well since you got it off, you might as well. One thing I think is worth pointing out is if you get these slightly harsher cleaners like the semi-chrome I talked about and here's one from Music Nomad called Guitar Polish. These guys are good for um, pieces of hardware that are pretty durable. 
when it comes to certain pieces of hardware, like you can tell on this, uh, let's see, this bridge piece on these um, these Jaguars, the, the metal's a little softer and somebody previously cleaned it and scratched it a little bit. And same thing for this uh, electronics cover. Um, for that, I've got a little bit milder cleaner called Virtuoso Premium Cleaner. And that you can use on metal, uh, on most metals and not have to worry too much about scratching it. Something like a bridge piece should be fine using something like semi-chrome or a nice good metal polish that's uh, pretty abrasive. They tend to make bridge pieces with some pretty resilient metal because they know people are going to be resting their hand on them and uh, they tend to get more oxidation than other parts on the guitar. Mm. You know, if you can find a, a little toothbrush like this, it can help in the bridge pieces and stuff like that. that. Those bristles can get in where your fingers can't. Well, when it comes to the fretboard, I like to clean it with three stages, kind of. And the first one is just a good basic cleaner. This is called a string cleaner and conditioner from Dunlop, but uh, I find it's really good for just getting all the gunk off of a fretboard. I, I like to use uh, a brush that's not too stiff. It's it's a little stiff, but it's it's good. Um, it's the right stiffness so I can I can get pretty aggressive with the brush like this with this cleaner and it's not going to make any marks on that wood. So search search around and find you a brush that you can scrub real hard with but doesn't leave any marks on the wood. And that way you can really scrub the wood on the fretboard really get in some of that ground in dirt. Like I said earlier, I like to use the semi-chrome uh, cleaner on my frets. And the way I do this th these days is just put a little bit on each fret. For years, I would put a little on each fret and use a cloth doing this kind of a deal. But after years and years of doing it that way, decided to try a Dremel because it's faster and doesn't hurt your finger from having to clean them all that way. Actually what I got was this little mini Dremel which I really recommend if you polish frets a lot. It's called the Dremel 2050. It's like it weighs next to nothing. It's a plug-in so um, you know I got a little plug uh, hanging, but it's not a big deal. And you just put something nice and soft, one of these round, soft um, polishers on it, and um, you can go real fast with frets on this. And it only takes a second. I'm not pressing hard, but it does a lot better job than me just using my finger and a cloth. And after that, you can quickly go over it with the towel. And they're bright and shiny. I do the uh, neck. There's three things for me. So first I clean the wood on the fretboard. Then I polish the frets. And last, I will uh, use an oil to hydrate the neck. And there's lots of different things you can use for this. Um, this one's called Diodario Hydrate. So now you've cleaned the wood on the fretboard and polished the frets before using some hydration for the wood there. They'll really get into the pores of the, the fretboard now. The tuners, I find the toothbrush is really handy. I'm using the uh, semi-chrome again and you can kind of quickly apply this stuff this way. And it's 
no big deal if it gets on the wood of the headstock it's not going to hurt it in any way normally i would just apply it and quickly be wiping it off with a rag but since these ones are so darn bad i'm doing a little extra polishing with the toothbrush first but you can just kind of like go across all of them quickly like that and then around the tuner posts you can do the back of the tuners the same way with the toothbrush do the sides then I'll make sure I get the tops of them you can just roll across these and then one hard part is on this particular kind of tuner is in between these tuners with the little screws are holding them on and what you can do is put some of your cleaner in there with the toothbrush and then grab a toothbrush that's totally clean doesn't have anything on it and go like that and if you have to get creative you know, put this rag. Sometimes I'll need to do that. So far, I've only cleaned the body with a, a very light all-purpose cleaner. After that, usually find some areas that have more dirt or sometimes haziness. You can see somebody rested their arm here all the time, like most people do, and then some haziness will build up in the finish for that i use um, something that's just slightly abrasive like this virtuoso premium cleaner it's fine to use on the body finish i might think twice now if this was some old vintage guitar from the 50s but this has got a big old thick clear coat finish on it so i use that to uh got right got rid of some of that haze right there and in fact haze is a a bummer of a problem on some guitars. I did an entire video on some of the ways I try and fix that using things like uh, different car waxes and uh, actually using a buffing wheel on my drill and stuff like that. So you can check out that video if you want. You know what else is a nice thing to clean too is the nuts. And I use uh, just a very lightly abrasive cleaner spread some on the top of it and go back and forth and that's going to whiten up that nut and actually use some of this Mitchell's abrasive cord this stuff's actually really good just to clean up nut slots in general when I'm setting up a guitar I like to just clean out any old gunk that's in the nut slots because often people use like nut sauce graphite uh, Vaseline, all kinds of different things to try and make the string slide smoothly. But what will happen is it will build up over years. They won't clean it out. I say how many times I see that old black. What used to be doing a good job helping it, uh, helping the strings move through the slot, now impeding it. And once I clean them out, uh, the, the tuning improves and the, I get less binding at the nut that way. So, there you have it. This went from being a real ugly dog to now being nicely polished on all that hardware. New screws in the pick guard. Body looking nice and shiny. And especially cleaning the neck and frets and oiling that neck. Getting the tuners all nice and clean. So yeah, she's looking pretty good now.